Hi everyone and welcome to the St George's University of London webinar on healthcare courses and careers. We are thrilled to have you here today um, and thanks so many of you for joining us. My name is Jacob and I'm the Student Recruitment Manager here at the University. Um, we really do hope this, uh, this webinar today will help you with your university choices um, and show you a few of the different options that are there um, for your potential careers. So joining me today, we also have my co-host Fiona, who will be in the background answering some of your questions, um, as well as our two student ambassadors, Chesley and Thee, who will be joining us throughout the webinar. So hopefully they're going to pop on your screens now and give you just a bit of a wave in the background there. So as I mentioned, we've got Fiona in the background who's going to be answering your questions. Um, so we really do encourage you to use that chat function that you can hopefully see on your screens. Um, and pop your questions in, which we'll, we'll try to answer. If we've got time in the webinar, we'll try and put some of these to our student ambassadors as well. Um, or if we don't get to them, we'll make sure that we come back to you with an email um, in the next few days. So unfortunately, as we go through the webinar today, a lot of it is me presenting to you and talking about the courses we have. Um, but where possible, I'm gonna ask Chesley and Fee to come onto our screens. Um, and give us a bit of their context about studying those courses or at the university. Um, and as I said, pop your questions in um, and answer. We'd love it if you answer our polls um, and engage with us throughout. So I'm gonna kick things off. So today, the first thing I'll be doing is giving you a quick introduction to St. George's, just to tell you a little bit more about who we are, what we offer and where we're located. We'll then look to explore the healthcare programmes that we offer at St George's University and discuss the type of work that you might undertake within those professions, the workplaces you may encounter, and also the typical teaching environments on, those, on these courses. We'll then go into the application and interview process, looking at personal statements, how our interviews work, and other elements of the non-academic entry criteria. And then finally, we'll be joined by the ambassadors to discuss their experiences studying on a healthcare course. So here on your screen now are a few photos of St George's past and present. So St George's is the only UK university that shares its campus with a hospital, and that being St George's Hospital. And we're located in Tooting, South West London. For those of you outside of London, that's roughly about 25 to 30 minutes from um, London Eye or on the, uh, on the Northern Line. Um, also just about kind of 10, 15 minutes down from Clapham if you're aware of where that is. All of our students are surrounded by healthcare in this environment. So no matter what course you choose to study, you're gonna be surrounded by healthcare practitioners, doctors, patients, um, and other students studying similar subjects to you. You might actually recognise the site from TV as 24 Hours in A&E on Channel 4 is filmed in St George's Hospital. And in the bottom right hand photo there, you can see the helipad of St George's that supports the air ambulance for patients requiring, requiring critical care. And when you're in the site, you can sometimes hear that taking off and landing. So there are a number of different healthcare courses available to you, and you might want to explore those in more detail. However, uh, today we're going to be focusing on the courses that we offer at St George's. So we'll begin by taking each course and discussing what type of work a practitioner within that role may undertake. And that will hopefully provide you with a deeper understanding of the profession. We'll then explore the different types of workplace for each course. And also give you a very brief flavour of teaching at St George's to give you some insight of what studying on one of these courses could actually look like at university. Unfortunately, we won't have time to focus on our medicine course within this webinar. However, if you do want more detail on that course, please visit our webinars page on the St. George's website, and you can watch our previous web webinar on exploring medicine, which goes into detail around that. If the healthcare course that you're interested in is not covered today, you might want to visit the NHS for Healthcare Careers website. And here you can learn more about over 350 different careers available within the NHS. Many healthcare careers now do require a degree. However, some courses may provide an in-service route 
So do check with your professional body of the chosen career that you're looking at and contact the universities for further details. And we won't be going into entry requirements of each specific course um, for the ones we look at today, but those, that information can be found on our website. And if you have any particular questions about them, you can email us at study at sgel.ac.uk. So first opportunity for you guys to interact with us. Um, I'd like to ask you what healthcare course really interests you. And you can type the thoughts uh, into your question box on the screen that you should have there. So hopefully we can see some of those coming in. Uh, let's see uh, clinical pharmacology which that is one of our um, science focused courses so we won't be talking too much detail about that one today uh, but there's some really great tester webinars on our website if you want to look in a bit more detail you can see physiotherapy healthcare science which is brilliant paramedic which we will be discussing um, so a few people have popped in medicine in there so to so say again we won't be going into detail today about that course there's a webinar on our website but you may find some of the information here um, useful also thinking with medicine obviously you can only apply to four places um, in UCAS four of your choices sorry so considering one of these courses maybe your fifth choice um, or a backup choice might be irrelevant Brilliant. So lots of different variety um, in the in the interest today, which is really great. So our first course that we're going to be looking at today um, is something I'm sure you're already familiar with. Haven't seen ambulances whizzing by, um, but have you ever actually stopped to think about what these paramedics are doing? So the type of work a paramedic does, um, we call them a first responder as they provide emergency pre-hospital care. And their work is a part of, team, of a team to provide immediate care to a patient in a range of situations. And that could be a patient's home, place of work, or perhaps the side of the road. As a paramedic, you could work in a variety of uh, environments, and that could be in the traditional ambulance service, in a GP practice, a hospital ward, within a theatre or A&E, and even a helicopter emergency service like the one we mentioned earlier. So most in paramedics are employed um, by the NHS, but some do work in the private sector. And this really is the type of job where you have variety. So you're not going to be sitting behind a desk and you're going to need to work independently and be able to take charge of a situation to problem solve and to communicate effectively with a wide range of individuals. To give you a flavour of what teaching could be like on this course, you, we'd reckon, we would, you'd have to be expected to be around 50% of the course learning in the workplace and the other half in academic study. So our students spend time working with the London Ambulance uh, Service on placement and multiple other placements, including A&E, hospital wards, intensive care, and other community-based placements. As you'd imagine, teaching is very practical, and it occurs in our state-of-the-art paramedic simulation centre, as well as reconstructed home environments. So, a paramedic will get the patient safely to hospital where a clinical team will then take over and one member of this team may be a diagnostic radiographer. Diagnostic radiographers are trained to use a wide range of sophisticated equipment such as an x-ray, an ultrasound, CT scan or MR, MRI machine and they'll use these to produce high quality images of the body which assist them to diagnose and treat a wide range of conditions. Diagnostic radiographers also work with a wider medical team to provide a tailored treatment plan for the individual patient. So the majority of diagnostic radiographers will work within the NHS 
However, some do work in research or in teaching. And if you're excited by a job where you use diagnostic tools to create images of the human body, which will then help you to treat a patient, and if you like to problem solve and enjoy working as part of a team, then this might be the career for you. If you chose to study this course at St George's, again, you'd be spending 50% of the course on placement within an NH trust, and NH, sorry, within the NH, NHS trust as a student radiographer. Our teaching time is also spent in high quality simulation, simulation facilities, as you can see the photos on your screen show. And these facilities really allow our students to practice while under the support and supervision of teachers who are themselves experienced radiographers before they start your placement. We also pay particular attention to developing your practical skills. So you'll spend time not just practicing how to use the equipment, but building your confidence when speaking to patients who perhaps are in pain and need to stay in a specific position for the, the photo to be taken, um, which might not be comfortable with the scan to be taken, I should say. So we've heard a little bit about diagnostic radiography, but what is radiotherapy and oncology? So this is the practice of treating people who are living with cancer. And you might have heard of oncology before, which is the study of cancer. And the field of oncology has three major areas, medical, surgical, and radiation. And a radiotherapist in this area would treat cancer patients using radiation. So you would play a vital role in the treatment of cancer using radiation and work as part of a team using your scientific and technical expertise, as well as your interpersonal skills to plan and deliver radiotherapy treatment. You'd also help patients manage the side effects from treatment in a compassionate clinical environment. So if you're wondering why our students are wearing 3D glasses in the image on the right there, and um, they're actually viewing a linear accelerator image, which is within our in-house simulation center, which enables our students to practice and learn those clinical techniques in a safe virtual environment. If you went into a career in this area, the majority of your work again would be within the NHS, but you do have the option to work in research or teaching. And you also get the opportunity to spend time with patients as they progress through their treatments. So it's really great if you enjoy that patient relationship. And interestingly, um, students studying this subject will spend a lot longer time with their patients than someone studying on diagnostic radiography, the last course we spoke about. So to succeed in this job, you need to have excellent interpersonal skills to support the patient and their family through the treatment process and excellent problem solving skills as you work within a team to diagnose and deliver the best treatment plan. So teaching on this course, um, you'll have the opportunity to practice scenarios using our in-house simulation centre, and that allows you to practice in a safe environment under the supervision of qualified radiographers. Half of the time is spent on clinical placement in hospital, interacting with patients. And patient care is really a theme that runs throughout the programme. And clinical placement starts early at the end of the very first term. So I'm going to invite Fee onto our screens, who is a current first year student on our radiotherapy and oncology course. Fee, could you tell us a little bit more about why you chose to study this course? Um, hi guys, I'm Fee. Um, so basically, I wanted to help people and just make a difference in people's lives, but I wasn't really sure what of course to do. So I did a bit of research, you know, looked at webinars, and then I found radiotherapy and oncology. And I like the fact that you work in a multidisciplinary team, so you never work alone. Like in every treatment you do, you always work with like a partner for your whole time as a radiotherapist. And then I also like the fact that um, you spend a lot of time with the patient because most of the patients have um, treatment for about four to six weeks. So you spend to build like a relationship with them, you get to know them. And obviously cancer is a very difficult um, disease and just being there for them and supporting them was very important to me. 
and finally i like the fact that you work with like a lot of technology you know a lot of like linux just new tech to like work with and just really fun, fun for me yeah so many amazing Right. Thanks so much for you. Spoke a lot about there about the kind of I guess the role of a radiotherapy and what you really enjoy about it. Um, is there anything that you enjoy particularly about perhaps like the studying side of it? Um, I think clinical placement. We had clinical like quite early. Um, while studying the course, so I think this was really important because it met I met a lot of radiotherapists quite early. I could speak to them about like experiences, what they find good about the job, and what they find difficult, you know, basically know the in and out of the job and see if I envision myself as that in the future. Um, I also like the learning about like anatomy, how the body works, because you have to learn that as well. And then what I really enjoy is the fact that we have a lot of talks with cancer survivors. So um, we can just like see the impact to actually make people that survive cancer, which is important. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks so much for sharing that. It's really interesting to hear, um, obviously, from someone studying on it. So thank you. Um, I'm now going to move on to our next course. So that is physiotherapy. So do you imagine that a patient has been seen by a diagnostic radiographer, perhaps, and is now on their way to recovering? As part of that recovery proce process, a patient might actually be seen by a physiotherapist. So a physiotherapist will use manual therapy as part of the rehabilitation process. And this is often for patients who have sustained an injury or are dealing with an illness or an ongoing disability. Physiotherapy encompasses a wide range of specialities and you might be familiar with muscular telescope applications. Physiotherapy actually has its root in cardio, respiratory, neurology, pediatrics, geriatrics, acute medicine, and much more areas. So physiotherapists can work in a range of locations, including the NHS, in perhaps an in intensive care or stroke unit, in a health clinic, a sports clinic, in, in a gym or a club, or even in pra private practice. As a physiotherapist, you'll work with a wide range of patients from babies all the way to the elderly, and it's really not just for those people who are interested in sports. You can look to specialise in an area of physical therapy if that is of interest to you then. You might enjoy a career in physiotherapy if you're interested in anatomy and physiology, therapeutic exercise, health promotion, or you might even have ambitions to run your own clinic. So our students carry out their learning in our state-of-the-art simulation centre, dedicated physio labs, pathology museum, anatomy and dissection rooms. All of these environments enable, enable them to learn clinical skills and practice their techniques in a safe environment. Learning is very much hands-on with this course and that gives students the opportunity to develop their communication skills. That could be an assimilated environment, such as the dedicated physio lab, which is stocked with hospital beds, simulated stairs, and other equipment used in physiotherapy practice. Or it could be while spending up to 30 weeks on practice placement, treating patients under supervision, both in hospital and community settings. So our students tell us that they really like the variety and the volume of placement opportunities on this course which are undertaken in a variety of health and social care environments, including the NHS hospital trusts, community-based services, charitable organisations, elite sport and private practice. So our patient is currently re receiving treatment by a physiotherapist and is now on their way to recovering. There appears to be a permanent injury. This patient may now be seen by an occupational therapist. So an occupational therapist helps people to improve their ability to perform everyday tasks. These, these individuals provide support after life-changing accidents with mental health issues and or support on coming to terms with disabilities caused by major, major trauma. So this is a career where you can be creative as you'll need a positive outlook and patience. And you'll also be helping support patients to regain their independence or as much form of function as possible, which, which may take some time. So 
Occupational therapists will often work within the NHS in perhaps a rehabilitation unit, but this career does offer much broader career opportunities, such as working in social care, housing, education, employment service, voluntary organisations, private practice. So if you are excited by a job where you'll have the opportunity to have a positive impact on the life of the patient, where you can spend a lot of time with patients and really help them to make the most out of their life, then this might be a career for you. So students studying occupational therapy at St George's spend around a thousand hours on placement in and around London in a range of different settings to broaden their experience. And this really is what our students tell us they like the most about the course. As well as being taught by an occupational therapist, where possible, we invite service users or even patients to talk to you directly about their own example. And that could be their lived experience of occupational therapy and the importance of participation in their, uh, participating in their occupations. Our students also have access to our dedicated art of living suite with a simulated kitchen and bathroom, which enables you to learn and practice skills within a safe environment, as you can see on that photo there. And the final course we're going to speak about today is healthcare science. And this might be a course that you're not so familiar with. So a healthcare science, science course trains students to become physiologists who specialize in cardiac or sleep and respiratory conditions. So cardiac being heart and respiratory being lung, throat and nose. If you did choose to study this course at St. George's, you'd receive training and placement in both cardiac and respiratory specialists in specialisms in your first year before you have the opportunity to choose which area you want to specialize in. And healthcare science is one of the most fast, uh, the fastest moving areas of the NHS. So if you decided to become a cardiac physiologist, you deal primarily with the diagnosis and assessment of heart disease, and you'd be setting up equipment, carrying out procedures, and recording and analyzing the results. So the tests you could be doing would include ECGs, angiograms, and or measuring blood pressure. Whoever is a sleep and respiratory physiologist, the other specialism that you might choose to go into, you'd assess sleep disorders, treat patients with lung disease, deliver ventilation for patients on wards or at home, and assess all aspects of lung function. And of course, these are just a few of the duties of both um, areas, um, and you, there will be many more that you will undertake if you, um, if you choose to have a career in this area. You'll work as part of a multidisciplinary team working with the, in the NHS or hospitals around the world, in perhaps a cardiology or respiratory and sleep department, in an outpatient clinic, a chest unit, a sleep centre or ward, or even operating theatres, depending on which route you choose to specialise in. So studying on a healthcare science course requires a large amount of patient content, uh, contact, and students at St George's experience 50 weeks on placement, and that's doing clinical training, in a wide variety of hospitals and NHS trusts. The variety, volume and quality of clinical placement opportunities is what our students tell us they really love about this course. And the often small cohort sizes on our healthcare science course mean individualized academic support is available. And students on this course often mix with many different healthcare students and professionals who they'll then go on to work with. So I'm now going to invite Chesley onto our screen, who is a third year healthcare science student. Um, and I'd love it if you could tell us a little bit why you chose to study this course. Uh, so I think uh, I chose to study healthcare science because it's got lots of placement experience. First of all, so you get to do a lot of um, hands on experience. Um, it's got really good job prospects and opportunities for growth as well and the content I'd be studying really appealed to me, so I really liked the respiratory and cardiac specialisms. Awesome, and I'm going to ask the same question to you. What is it you most really enjoy about studying that on that course? I think it's it's that it gives me both respiratory and cardiac options. Um, so 
we get both placement experience in respiratory and cardiac. It really helps me kind of an informed decision on what you want to do in the future and what you want to specialize in. Um, I mean, it's not just specialized as well. This comes a bit later, but it really focuses on just like basic physiology as well. So it really helps you to know everything before you specialize. Yeah, I guess it's it's really nice um, that you get the opportunity to essentially learn more before you pick what, what route you want to go into, which um, I can imagine really helps. Thanks so much, Chesley. Um, as I mentioned at the start of, of the webinar, all of the entry requirements for the courses I've gone through um, are on our website with details. So if you're interested in any of those, do pop on there and have a look um, and the breakdown of all of the different qualifications you're studying should be on there. So now we've looked at all of the healthcare courses we offer at St George's, I'm going to take a pause here and ask our ambassadors a little bit more about their experiences. So um, Theo, I'll come to you first. Um, obviously, you're still in your first year of studying and um, you started in the, uh, I guess, around mid September. Um, but I'd like to know about the challenges that you face so far on your course. Um, basically, I'm not really good at maths, naturally, it's very sad, but um, th there's quite a lot of maths in my course. So when I started in the course, I found it quite difficult to adjust to that, um, the maths part of the course. But I had like a lot of support and like a lot of tutorials which were really helpful that helped me sort of get better at maths. And then the main thing is about like, placement, which was basically dealing with end of life care, because being placement, I formed it like, a lot of relationship with the patient because I, I helped them on their cancer journey and just seeing them great friend of life was very tough to um sort of deal with um because mm -hmm. it's my first time at placement and I didn't know how to handle that I obviously I spoke to my lecturer and they're you know, like just I'll probably get used to it and obviously having that um fulfillment in helping them would help me through we through, through that but yeah it's my two biggest wins yeah, I can I can certainly imagine that um, the second point you, you mentioned there would be a real challenge. Um, did you find the I guess the more play opportunity that the more opportunity you had to do that, the easier it, it becomes? I imagine it obviously it's a challenge every time, but did those placement opportunities help you through that? 100 percent definitely. I feel like the more I got exposed to the course, the more I got used to it. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Um, and Chesley, you're a little bit further into your course, obviously in your third year now. Um, so looking back across those three years, do you think you made the right decision to study this course? Um, and and why really? Um, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, I mean, the experiences I've had so far at placement, I've gone to so many different hospitals, um, met so many different types of patients. Um, and, you know, uh, being around so many different types of teams, um, all of those experiences have just been um, made it one of the best decisions I've made. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say you've been for a year, so I imagine there's probably been some challenges. Um, is there any that really stand out for you across that period? I think, um, you know, although placement is one of the, the best uh, things to be able to get with this course, um, combined with studying can be kind of tough at first especially if you have to travel. Um, so it's kind of hard at first to kind of find that balance between studying assignments and placement at the same time. But we always get, you know, we always get study day off. So it's always, it's always good to, you know, once you find your balance, it, it's, it's okay to get, um, you know, to get with it, I guess, yeah. Yeah, just finding, man managing that diary, I guess, and making sure you've got time yeah. to but And for social as well, like you say, you know, you need to need some downtime as well. But um, yeah, thank you so much to both of you. Um, we're now going to just move on and take a look at the application and the interview process in a bit more detail. So applying for the course, um, obviously you will be required to complete a personal statement, um, talk about your work experience, obviously gain work experience um, and sit and interview. So to begin with, I'm going to talk about the application process. So the research section and um, before making an application we we recommend that you really do your research into the course and um, look at university websites speak to perhaps inquiries teams if you've got specific questions attend virtual open days or webinars just like this one i'm sure lots of universities are offering them 
um, and speak to students online. So you can use things like the student room for that or UniBuddy that we have at St George's. You can pop on and actually speak directly to our students and they'll, they'll message you back. Course advisors will hopefully advise you which professional bodies that you can join when you graduate. And that's something to really consider now and make sure that all the course choices that you are taking will lead to the registration that you expect them to. And it really is the more research you can do, the better informed you're going to be when making a decision. So you'll then apply for UCAS for most undergraduate courses. Really important to know the application deadline. For the courses we've talked about, though, that will usually be the 15th of January. Um, but that has recently changed, so that is worth checking every year um, to check that that is the, the, that is the confirmed deadline for that year. Um, you need to also apply using the institution code and course code, and that can be found on the UCAS website and the university websites. You also want to check that all you meet all entry requirements for the course that you're interested in, and that includes GCSE grades. You want to make sure that you are not essentially wasting an, an application on somewhere you won't get into and you want to meet those grades. You'll also need to check if work experience is required um, and our webinar in next Wednesday again might be more useful, uh, might be useful for you in that situation where we talk about work experience for healthcare courses and that's next Wednesday. You've also got to provide an academic reference within your application. Um, and your school or college should be able to help you with that. As part of the UCAS application, you're going to be asked to complete a personal statement. Um, what really is a personal statement and how do you write them? There's lots of support on the internet um, and universities will provide a lot of support around this. But really think of it as your opportunity to just, just demonstrate to us these things. So, passion why are you interested in this course and what passion have you got for that specific career your understanding so demonstrate to us that you do have a strong understanding of this profession already you could use such as you know if you're applying for diagnostic radiographer you understand that you're going to use x-ray machines and ct scanners whereas a physiotherapist will be using manual therapy and exercise techniques also, this is where you can bring your work experience into play and use the examples of what you've undertaken to show your understanding and insight into the profession and the course. Again, we'll speak more about that in the, in the webinar next Wednesday um, at 5 p.m. if you're interested. Show us why you are the right candidate. We won't have met you before or won't know who you are when you apply and the personal statement needs to show to us what you're really about. And finally, use your own words, as I'm sure that everyone would, uh, wouldn't, you know, people wouldn't use this, but we do check plagiarism, putting it through software that does that for us. So don't be tempted to take something off the internet or you copy your friends. Something else that you might want to consider when writing this, your personal statement is what skills are important for someone studying on my course? So I'm going to ask Fee and Chesley to speak about the skills they think are important for a healthcare practitioner, which might help. So Fee, I'll come to you first. What, what skills do you think are, are really important for someone who is going to go on to essentially study a healthcare course? Um, definitely communication. And this, like, because you're going to work with a lot of people, like you're going to work in a team, most definitely. So I think it's important to be able to communicate with your team mates your colleagues properly and also the patients um if a patient is sick or diagnosed with cancer they're definitely scared worried anxious so you need to be able to like communicate properly and calm them down make them feel better and their family as well you need to help them relax and also attention to detail because for my course re therapy um we will be a lot of like high radiation and um, technology and equipment so you have to like be focused, you know, um, to give the right dose to the patient. But yeah, those are the two main ones, I'll say. Thanks, Faye. Um, Chesley, would you add anything to that? Uh, yeah, um, I'd say teamwork is quite important, um, especially when you're working in a healthcare course, just because 
you're not just working um, with your role. For example, for myself, I'm not working with just physiologists. I'm also working with respiratory nurses, respiratory consultants. Um, so there's a whole wider multidisciplinary team that you have to be able to kind of communicate with and um, pass along patient details and um, help discuss patient uh, treatment and diagnosis. Um, and I would also say problem solving as well. That's quite important. So uh, in physiology, when we're doing tests, um, sometimes we need to, uh, you know, uh, coach patients differently because every patient is different. You need to give them different approaches to uh, to their diagnostic tests, to how they how they should get their treatment. I think that's all. All of those points there are really brilliant. So thanks so much for sharing. You can see that even across the different healthcare professions or courses there a lot of the skills are interchangeable so hopefully that will help you um, if you're attending you're considering one of our courses or, or any healthcare course so we're going to now talk about the interview um, so at st george's we'll use multiple mini interviews to test candidates as well as panel interviews um, so all of our courses that we've talked about today do require an interview of some type um, and if you attend a multiple mini interview, you'll be asked a series of questions at different stations um, before you move around. And you can see an example of that on the left there. In this situation, questions are marked from each st se uh, station separately and independently, and you receive an overall mark for the interview. And in our interviews, we'll look to test the awareness of key competencies, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, you may also have a panel interview and other inter universities may use a panel or a group interview. So think about how you prepare for an interview in all of those different situations and what, what you might need to change. For the past few years, lots of universities have been running virtual interviews, either by recording a video or a panel interview over Zoom. At this moment in time, we're still to confirm what our interviews will look like for 2023 entry. They could be remote or they could be in person, but it's worth being aware that you might be required to interview remotely and thinking about how you might want to prepare differently for this. And it could be that some of the unis you're applying to are remote and some are in person. Um, Chesley, would you mind telling us a little about your experiences interviewing and perhaps about the feelings that you had before and during and, and even after the interview? yeah um so my interview was a panel interview um and i think before the interview i was quite nervous it can be scary because you know you feel a lot of pressure to not mess up um you know you want to be, be able to get an offer from the university i think um and you know during the interview though uh, i think it was i was a lot more relaxed um you know and there's always going to be a question that you, you're not prepared for so it can be hard to kind of think on the spot but you know, it's it's a new chapter in your life, and that's quite also exciting as well. Definitely, thank you. And I think that, that especially if you're coming in person to an interview, it's a great opportunity to see the university and see if it's a place for you. Um, so make the most mm -hmm. of that opportunity if you can as well. Okay, so we're going to move on to talk about key competencies. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question here. Do you know what these? Uh, the, do you know much about key competencies? And I've got three of them here. I'm going to pop up on your screen, and I'd like you to choose the one you think represents a, a key competency that we'd be looking for. So I'll just pop this poll up for you. So hopefully that is on your screens now, and you should be able to select one of um, those three there that you think is a key competency. I'll just leave that on your screen a little bit longer. And then I'll give it a few more seconds. Okay, wonderful. So hopefully you can see that 63% of you um, selected organisational problem solving, 29% respect and dignity, and 8% professionalism. 
And the correct answer is actually organization and problem solving, which is a key competency. So well done to you that they got that one right. I'm now going to move on to look at some of the other competencies that you might want to consider. So key competencies are actually a guide to the skills and the attributes that you should hold when considering a career in healthcare. Some of these, let's look at, let's have a look at these in a bit more detail. So I'm sure you understand skills such as communication and teamwork are important to working in healthcare and we've actually talked about them um, with some of the ambassadors today already. Um, whilst operating part of a multidisciplinary team and assessing patients, it's so important that you can communicate clearly and effectively with your team members and the patients, you know, both sets of people. And there could be age or cultural differences that require you to adapt your communication style or content. Empathy. So this is understanding what others are expecting and feeling. And it's not to be confused with sympathy. And it's again an essential skill to have when working in a healthcare environment. Effective learning style. This is about how you manage your own learning and showcasing to us that you have a good understanding of this. So an example of this could be someone who's a visual learner. They therefore learn better through physically doing a task, showing that you understand that's how you learn best. So there's a few on there that you might not have such a strong understanding of and perhaps insight and integrity. So insight is the, is the being able to understand a situation and determine the best course of action for that situation. And integrity is having the principles and values. And we'll consider the NHS value shortly, which might support you with this question. Um, innovative and resi resilient. So innovative is being able to under uh, sorry initiative um, is being able to undertake action to help resolve a situation, and resilience being able to recover quickly when something goes wrong, and learn from that experience. The NHS also have a set of values that you should be aware of. Um, so there is a list of 10 values on the side there. Um, I'd like you to think about it and perhaps pop in the, in the chats at the Q&A section and which ones you think are the values. There's six of them and four of them aren't NHS values. Um, some of these will be, and the key, some of these and our key competencies will be part of the interview process. So this is a really good process to start thinking about how you meet these areas. So I can see some of you are popping them in, which is great. Okay, so I'll... There you go, you can see the answers there on your screen. Um, so as I say, these are, are you know, things that you really should be considering. You can learn more about them on the NHS website in preparation for a potential interview. So throughout this webinar, we've explored the healthcare courses at St. George's and also looked at what the workplace and type of work you might encounter if you choose to progress your career in that field. We've also taken a brief look at the application and interview process for studying at university and discussed some of the key competencies and NHS values. And now for the final part, I'm gonna invite ambassadors back onto your screen um, just to discuss some potential tips for you after this webinar to take away and really help you to prepare, prepare best for your future career paths. So Thea, I'm gonna come back to you again to start with. Um, is there any advice that you'd give our attendees if they are considering studying, um, you know, trying to choose what healthcare course they should, they want to study? Um, definitely research, like research a lot, go to a lot of webinars like this, go to talks, go to anything you can basically go to, uh, mm -hmm. because they all have that same goal of like, I want to help people, I want to make a difference, but they're still different in their own ways. So I feel like it's important to like know each of them in and out, so you can like know which one featured the most. Like such up like, oh, what is the typical day of, you know, a radiographer or someone and that diagnostic radiographer and see if that fits you in the future, does that make sense? Um, and for the interview, definitely be calm, 
um, try to um, think before you speak because you can just speak easily because sometimes they're very like easy questions but not really so try to stay calm you know try to like know your stuff if you research you probably, you probably find um, and prepare for like random questions because obviously they're going to ask why do you want to do the course what skills do you have but they also have like some really random questions so try to practice for that and yeah just enjoy the process mm -hmm. i think that staying calm one is like so valuable in like kind of being collective when you answer the, the questions um yeah thank you uh Ch chesley is there anything that you'd add to that yeah i mean i'd say uh when you're you know trying to choose what course you want to study specifically make a list of what your priorities are i mean do you want a nine to five job do you want it shift based do you want to work night shifts you know things like that if you have your priorities about what you want to do in the future um you know list it out you can you know more specifically choose a course you want to do and um i mean also make a list of you know all of the subjects in healthcare that interest you so for me it was respiratory and cardiac systems that really interested me and it will kind of help you to rule out anything you don't want to do um i mean i i ruled out physics i didn't want anything to really do with physics um and then also um, make sure to gain some experience you know so um anything you know working around patients even working in like a care home just knowing, you know, um, how it is, what to expect when you're working around patients is really helpful. Yeah, I really like that tip of uh, thinking about actually what is it you want to learn or study about. I think it is so hard when you've got all these courses in front of you, which sound similar at first look. Um, so taking time to think actually what is it I enjoy and what do I want to learn about is, is really important. And then looking at the kind of modules that is offer, I guess. Um, Fee, you talked briefly about interviews, um, but do you think there's anything that, any tips you could give our attendees to help start preparing for interviews maybe later down the stage, um, at, well, for them now really, to think about? Um, definitely, like I said, research um, about the course. I feel like even though the course in and out, they can't really trick you, if that makes sense, because you know it so well like look at the news what's on the news about the course look at any new development just reach about the course and also so prepare for random questions because they will definitely come up <laughs> and make sure you just test yourself do a lot of practice you know ask friends family to practice with you um yeah so the main tips brilliant thank you um and Chesley, coming to you again you're obviously in the final year of your undergraduate degree have you got any future career plans um, at this moment for when you graduate? Yeah, so at the moment I kind of I want to start working, um, maybe progress up my up the band in my job, but uh, I might also consider after a year of working um, also doing a master's too. Awesome, best of luck with that. Okay, so I'm now going to open up the floor um, to any questions that our attendees have um on any of these courses or any of the questions you'd like to ask our ambassadors and um obviously we'll do the best to answer those um just to start off with one we had sent in before um could you tell us both about your kind of living situations um, whilst you were studying um so we'll come to you first obviously i know you're in your first year um so currently i'm living in halls so the combination of the, of the university at st george's um, I think it's great, personally, I love it here because it makes everything so much easier because it's like a lot of um, societies and events at uni, so you can just 10 minutes walk, you're there, like you're just off at uni, even the library is 20, open 24 hours, so you can literally go to the uni, the library, anytime you want to, because it's so close, it's just so convenient, and it's a really nice place, so yeah. And are you sharing, um, I assume you've got your own kind of private room with bathroom and then do you share that with like a flat with other people is that right yep so um we have our own personal bathroom and toilet everything but we share um, a kitchen with six flatmates so we're six in total and one kitchen yeah. and each bathroom for ourselves yeah brilliant thank you and chesley did you study um move into halls when you first came or were you uh, living at home or in other accommodation 
Yeah, so I moved into halls as well when I first came. Um, and actually back here for third year as well. Um, mm. Yeah, and it's pretty much, it's quite, it's really nice to live in halls. I mean, you get all your bills kind of, it's all bills included. So you don't have to worry about, you know, paying the separate bills every month, all of that. Um, and like he said, it's, you know, it's really close by. Um, you know, you can just go to the library whenever you want. Uh, and, you know, it's en suite, all of that. So it's quite nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've had a few questions come in, um, so either of you I think feel free to, to speak to these. Um, the first one we had was how did you come, how can you come to a conclusion to which specific area of healthcare that you wanted to work in? I think we've touched upon that slightly but was there anything either of you would, would add? Um, so I think I came to the conclusion with um, when I just kind of made the list of what I wanted. I knew I didn't really want to do any kind of um, shift based, so like 12 hours, three days a week kind of thing. I wanted more of a stable nine to five, Monday to Friday kind of thing. And that's kind of offered with respiratory and sleep um, or cardiac physiology as well. Um, and uh, I think for me, it's I really couldn't decide between respiratory and sleep or cardiac. And I really wanted to, you know, kind of have a, a full overview before I made a decision which you can really only get from placement. Um, and that really attracted me about this course because it gives you both options. Thanks. I think, yeah, like thinking about what that actual career will look like, like you talked about working nine to five, it's, it's a really good way of narrowing it down. Um, Fee, do you find, another question here, do you find that you still get the typical uni experience studying at St. George's? Definitely, one like, definitely, one hundred percent. Um, I think that also has to do like moving out as well, because you know, uni involves the whole going out, meeting new people, society, lectures. So I feel like I definitely, I'm still experiencing that even seven months in, six months in, I think, mm -hmm. about six months in. Um, because as I said, there's just so much stuff happening in uni at St George's that you can get involved in and that mix of the experience. So yeah. Brilliant, thanks. Um, we've had a question come in um, about the diversity at St George's. Um, would either of you be comfortable commenting on, on your how you see the diversity at St George's when you're in studying there? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think um, for me, uh, uh, it was really nice to actually come over here um, and because it's really quite diverse. There's so many different um, cultures, so many different backgrounds here. There's international students as well. Um, so it's it it was um, you know I came you know from predominantly white area and London is just so diverse. Uh, so it's quite it was quite nice to you know um, come to a place where you know you meet so many different people, so many different backgrounds. So yeah, I thought it was quite diverse. I mean I think um, my friendship groups you know. Are completely diverse as well so it's quite nice um yeah and adding to what chesley said um there's quite a lot of like societies as well there's like acs for Af the african caribbean society there's like the diwali show like there's so much society and shows that show different cultures and my St. judges is a fun really really like good Thank you, Blue. And I think from my experience, I think tooting generally is quite a diverse area as well, isn't it? So you, you kind of, the whole community feels quite diverse. Um, we've had a question about a cardiac physiologist. What do you think a typical day is like? You mentioned it was like a nine to five job in that area. Um, is there anything you'd add to that? Yeah, so um, I ended up specialising in breast and sleep. But with cardiac physiology, it's more kind of, um, so you do tests, different types of testing. So there's ECGs. So you could be doing different cl clinics, for example. So one clinic might be, you know, you're doing ECGs for patients. One might be you're analyzing um, uh, heart monitors. So, uh, you know, patients that go home with 24 hour heart monitors, you um, analyze those, uh, those ECG sheets. Um, one might be a clinic where you're, you know, seeing patients that have got pacemakers in, or you might also be in cath labs where, um, you know, you're watching angiograms, uh, all of that. Um, so it's it's it can vary day to day, um, you know, but 
there's so many different clinics you're you're doing different things every day thank you and um, we've also had a question on class size um obviously appreciate well actually I'll, I'll, you guys can speak to the different types of maybe learning you do as well and then and, and sizes of them uh Fee, do you want to go first then we'll come to you Shelby. For my course, we're quite small, so we all fit in the session in one lecture together, but like about 20, 21 ish. So we we and the thing that because we're so small, we have like a lot of online lecture um, no on site lectures. So we're, I'm basically always at uni for my lectures, mm -hmm. and obviously they're also recorded, which I find extremely helpful. So if you're like having a bad day, you're not really focused, you can just rewatch the lecture at home. Um, yeah, and I feel like there's also a lot of group learning as well. So a lot of group work, a lot of presentations involved. Yeah. So. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, I mean, uh, my course is also quite small. Um, I mean, in my cohort, there's about 25 people. Um, and then about six of us, seven of us took uh, respiratory sleep physiology and the rest took cardiac physiology. Um, in first year, because we're more doing an overview of both respiratory cardiac and you know basic physiology, we have a lot of our lectures with medicine students. So um, that means our lecture size like uh, is actually quite large. We do also have our own kind of specialized small teachings with just you know our cohort as well. Um, and that was that's all kind of on site at the moment. We do also we did I mean in second year when there was you know the pandemic all of that there was a lot of online um, lectures, um, but now now this year it's all it's all been kind of on uh, on site and um, like Fee said it's all recorded as well which is great. It's nice that um, mixing with medicine students I guess in the first year as well for expanding like friendship groups and stuff and meeting new people. Um, thanks both. We're running a little bit tight on time, so I'm just going to ask you um, for one more question and anyone else we haven't come back to um, we will come to you by email in the next few days so do you think that being on the same site as the hospital makes St George's different from other universities do we go to it sorry um, should we get <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind <laughs> um definitely 100 percent um at first it can be quite overwhelming like seeing patients literally every day um it can be tough to get used to but then as you get used to it it's just it makes sense because if you're trying to work in the healthcare in the future and being surrounded by that kind of makes sense like it makes you feel like you're already working in the healthcare already physically like you feel more comfortable so like when you go to placement you're more used to it like it just it seems more like normal so yeah i think it makes it definitely very different Anything you'd add to yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. I think um, it just it's a lot more like helpful to see, um, you know, how everything works. And plus, you know, you're not just completely surrounded by the hospital. I mean, there is a little bit of a divide. So it's the hospital and it's the student area. So, you know, it is it, there is student area and the hospital. But I mean, it's nice to also see, you know, um, everyone in their uniforms. You know, it's it's kind of a good to have that experience you're seeing everyone you're getting used to it right from the start thank you so much both of you um some really really great advice and tips and just really wonderful to hear your experiences i'm sure people would have really benefit from that and um, i'm just going to wrap up the session now so thanks to everyone who's attended um as i said we are running another webinar next wednesday and details will be sent in it if you are after this event. If you, we'd love for you to join us if you have signed up or you haven't yet. Um, and within it, we'll be looking at why universities ask for work experience, what type is, of your experience is useful, and how can you best reflect and, and use the experience you do have to the best of your ability. Um, so, as I say, you'll be sent a link after this email, um, after this event, sorry, in the email, or you can pop onto our website to join and register. And finally, um, just a few links on your screen there for if you are looking for more information from us, you can contact us at webinars at sgul.ac.k or if you've got a specific question about a course or your qualification, contact us at study at sgul.ac.uk, which is our inquiries team and also the phone number there. 
if you pop onto our website, you can speak directly to our students and speak to them by Unibuddy. Um, as well as the webinar I've just mentioned, there's some pre-recorded webinars on our website as well that you might want to look at um, for some information around some of our courses as well and our social links there. So that is everything from us. A big thank you to everyone who's joined us today. A recording of this webinar will be sent out as well, um, so you will be able to watch it back if you want to. Thanks so much. Have a lovely evening and hopefully see you all again soon. Bye.